I'm gonna do it. Do it is not meant for you. It's for oh, the kids. I'm a kid at heart, man. Um, I don't think it's a good idea. A few days earlier. Hey guys, we are gonna kickstart our first extreme makeover series of the den which is a small tiny area by our living room separated by the sliding doors. It's not a huge area but it gets tons of lighting and given that we spend most of our waking hours in the living room, I thought it could be a perfect play area for the kids. So we'll get into unique and creative DIY storage and organization solutions in the weeks to come. So plan is to create a fun and functional play area for the kids because, you know, you gotta appease the kids, right? Aww. Or they'll drive you up the wall. Speaking of wall, this is the wall that we are gonna tackle today. So the plan is to turn it into a rock climbing wall. Now, for any sane person, they could have just added rock climbing holes to this wall and that would have been the end of the story. Well, me being me, I wanted to put a wall rock and paint a naturalistic mountain mural and add holes to it for dimension and 3D effect. The thing is though, so I have no painting experience. Um, sorry guys, this is Hirata's editor here. She got a little carried away there. What she meant to say was she has no experience with painting nature. Come on Hira, get it together. I could have just picked a regular sized canvas to get my feet wet. However, the crazy side of me was like, eh, I can do the full wall and have my own happy little accidents. But boy, was I wrong. So pro tip number one, do not try this at home until you get some experience with smaller mediums. Anyhow, enough self-deprecation for now. Let's get started. First things first, I taped up the parameters and covered the floor because you don't want to clean up the paint off the floor because it dries up quick. All right, so in terms of materials, you need black and white paint and this dude right here. This is a painter's blade. I'm gonna be using it for the first time. But based on most of the Bob Ross mountain paintings that I've seen, this is what he uses. This does all the magic for you. Well, I mean, if you use it correctly. So hopefully, hopefully I can figure this thing out and make it happen. All right guys, so as you can see, I decided to go freestyle in this case, but I would recommend against it as I paid for it later on. See, the thing is I was inspired by Bob Ross, who made it look so relaxing and therapeutic and easy and accessible, but it quickly turned into a nightmare for a beginner like myself. So if you want to save time and are a beginner like me, I would recommend drawing out the mural. Also, for some people, it may help to not only sketch it out, but also measure it out and then transpose it onto the wall. I painted out a basic outline of my mountainous range using a painter's blade and black paint. Once the basic outline was completed, next step was to go over it using white paint. Basically, the point was to differentiate between the areas where the sunlight hits versus the ones that are in the dark and add more of a 3D effect to these mountains. As you can see, I would start off on the right side of each mountain's peak with the white paint and basically drag it downwards, following the shape of that mountain, almost giving the illusion that the light is hitting the mountains from the right hand side. And I went all the way down with that gray. Alright, time to take the mommy hat off and put the painter's hat back on. I wanted to point out that Bob Ross would use oil paint for his wet on wet technique, which takes time to dry up and allows for easier blending and mixing. However, I use acrylic paint in this case, given that I was working on this at nighttime while the kiddos were asleep and didn't want their tiny little fingerprints plastered all over my hard work the next morning. It also dries up super fast which means you gotta work with a small area at a time. Plus, acrylic paint is also less intrusive to the senses so that's why we prefer that over oil paint. However, you can go with whichever option suits your needs best. The next step was to add more depth 
and character by adding details using different shades of grey and if you like other earthy tones like browns for more of a natural effect, definitely go for it. Also, as you can see, I'm using the peak here as a demarcation point and everything to the left of it is being stroked downwards towards the left and everything to the right in the right direction. I used black and white for this project because I wanted the colorful accents and toys to jump out in front of the neutral mountain colors. It definitely wasn't easy convincing the husband to go with black in the play area, but after a lot of back and forth, we made it happen. Alright, rock, paper, scissors. Black it is. Now that that's out of the way, the next step was to create the next range of mountains. These would be a little closer than the first ones. And so from the depth perception context, I started making them underneath the first range that I made. So I'm basically making the outline first. I would suggest starting off with the black paint for the mountains because when you break the paint later on with your painter's blade for more texture, the black in the bottom layer shows through and immediately creates a majestic effect. One thing I noticed over here was that I used the paintbrush instead of a painter's blade. Even though the intent was to speed up the process, I feel like it resulted in wasted effort as the paintbrush could not give me the same rocky natural effect that I was looking for. Now all I had to do was rinse and repeat and just like the previous mountain range, Add light gray to the right hand side of each of the mountain using the painter's blade. I would also suggest that you don't mix the paints completely and rather leave the marble like consistency in your paint as that will help achieve more of an interesting and natural looking texture. So here's a look at the end of day two. I'm not hating it so far, which is refreshing. Hopefully I don't jinx it. Alright guys, so day 3 is when things went haywire and I started messing things up. A warning to all the Bob Ross fans in advance that I'm about to butcher this not so perfect amateur painting of mine. See the thing is all was going okay with my mountainous ranges, but I wanted to mix things up by adding some rolling hills to this mix, which I had no idea how to paint and literally it took me a gazillion attempts and half my sanity to figure out the right technique. I started off by making an outline for the rolling hills. Basically I wanted them to be random and free forming. The next thing was to color in with black paint. Oh my god this looks like an ugly mess. The next step was to add some dimension and depth to the hills by adding light gray to it and working away using a painter's blade. Painting the rolling hills was the most painstaking and challenging part of the whole process. So guys, a word of advice for you. Do not be like me. Learn from my mistakes and have a plan in place so you are not shooting in the dark like I did. I mean, that's the whole point of showing you the unfiltered version so you don't waste your time making the same mistakes. Another thing is I wanted some gradation in the rolling hills from lightest to darkest as they come down but I went about it very randomly and couldn't achieve the required effect until after pulling some hair in the process. My tip would be to start off with the lightest rolling hill and add black to it as you're coming down. It's always easier to start off with the lightest color and make it darker than the other way around. Then I started slowly throwing away all my hard work down the drain by painting everything black again. Wait, 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 what? See, the thing is guys, I wasn't digging the look I was getting with a paintbrush, so I decided to start fresh with black paint. See now that's the beauty of trial and error but the important thing is you don't give up. Alright guys as promised here's the close-up of the blading technique. Pat on the back to you Hera for actually realizing and remembering to record the close-up. I think you're getting better with time. Good job. So basically as you can see what I did was I went with my painter's blade and dragged it down to create the rocky mountainous effect in the process. The next step was to add some rock climbing folds. So we got these oversized ones just so it's easier for the kids to hold on to and painted them gray just so they blend well with the background and add 3D effect to our mural. I also sprayed some sealant to the holes just so the paint doesn't come off and I'm sorry guys I actually forgot to record that but it's very simple basically I just sprayed some sealant on top and because it's super drippy I wiped off the excess because it dries as is. 
Next, it was the hubby's turn to roll up the sleeves and put in some weight. <laughs> he drilled some holes in the concrete using a hammer drill and that was the last step you guys. Present day. Uh, Papa, are you okay? Oh, I'm not that much of a kid. Told you it wasn't a good idea. Oh, I'm probably gonna need some painkillers.